So first, can you just tell me your name? My name is Grover McMichael. I was born June the 4th, 1923. Thank in you. Gadsden, Alabama. Thank you. And why did you, how did you first hear about the war and why did you join the Navy? My dad came in as my brother and I had been out that night and woke us up and told us to get up. It wasn't a asking question, it was a, a command to get, out, get up and get out there. And when we got out, he told us that Japan has attacked Pearl Harbor and we're going to be at war. And my brother and I just looked at each other and said to each other, it's just a matter of when. So we went on about our business and we joined the Navy on September the 8th, 1942. That was nearly six, eight months after Pearl Harbor. And we went in the Navy and went to boot camp at uh, Great Lakes, Illinois. And we were in boot camp approximately four weeks. And we were, we were given one week's uh, leave and we went home. And my dad went with us to the Union Station in Cincinnati, Ohio, to get on the train to go to Norfolk to catch the ship. And before we started to get on, he said to us, and this is another command like, you boys come here. And we walked over and said, yes, Dad. And he put his arm, one arm around my brother's neck and one around mine and put his head between ours. He said, don't ever be afraid, afraid to pull the trigger, those people will kill you. And the other thing he said when we started to get on the train, he said to us, don't do, don't do something, you'll be ashamed of the rest of your life. And my brother and I just got on the train and left. We got about halfway to Norfolk. My brother said to me, he said, what did he mean by that, saying that to us? He said, I said, I took it, John, that he, he was telling us, if we had to die, die like men. Don't curl up and take somebody with you when you go. Don't just give it up. And then my brother said, well, hey, he used another word. I was going to do that anyhow. And then we got to Norfolk and we waited around until the Emmons came in and we, uh, we uh, placed aboard the Emmons and we were, when we were left there, we were on our way to Boston. And we went through Cape Hatteras and I got deathly seasick, and I thought I was going to die, I wished I could. But after I got through that one time, it never happened again. And we got to Boston, and we were in there for a little while, and then I, we went somewhere from there, <laughs> I don't know where, and probably down to, we went and made a trip to Panama, and we also made a trip to uh, Newfoundland and went to Argentina, and then we went to Cuba, I think. And after that, we went over to, I think, to Scalpel Flow, Northern Scotland. And I was transferred to Sonar School. And I went to Sonar School and was there for six weeks, I think it was. And I came back to Boston and caught the ship when it came into Boston. And we, from then on, I stayed on the Emmons through the Atlantic times and through uh, times in the Mediterranean. In, uh, night, in uh, May, they sent us up to England and uh, we made the invasion at Omaha Beach. And when we were done with that, we moved down to Cherbourg and shell Cherbourg while the army was moving in. And from there we left and went to uh, well, heck, I just tell the person where we went. <laughs> and it was, uh, anyhow, there was three of us had a picture made there with each other, and I just gave it to somebody in here. And uh, from there, we went back into the Mediterranean and stayed there uh, on uh, May the 14th before we went to, getting it straightened out here now, before we went to the uh, yeah, invasion of Europe. We had helped sink a German submarine, and uh, some prisoners were taken. And I think the USS Ellison took them down to Gibraltar and turned them over to the British there. 
and then we went to uh, Merzel Kabir, North Africa. And from there, actually from there we went to Normandy and the other happened and then from there we went back to the Mediterranean and the invasion of southern France. And after that, we left southern France, we came back to Boston and they converted the Emmons into a destroyer, DMS, destroyer minesweeper. And uh, from there I was transferred off of the Emmons and I went to Sonar School again. And uh, I heard that the Emmons was sunk after I got out of Sonar School and I was in Norfolk in the hospital. And uh, I saw one of the men that was on the Emmons and he told me it had been sunk. And then I put a, another destroyer in commission in Orange, Texas, in, in the USS Dias. And uh, after the war was over, we went through the canal to San Diego, and then, then I, I had enough points I put in for my discharge, and that's it. Can you describe what your, you went to sonar school to become a... Sonar operator. And what does that mean? What would you do? That, that we would ping to see if we got an echo back from submarines. It was, it was anti-submarine warfare is what it was. But my battle station was a 20 millimeter machine gun. And uh, the man that took my gun when I was transferred was killed at, uh, Oka in, uh, at Okinawa by kamikazes. His name was Cole. Cole. He was from uh, Chicago, I think. And then, what was um, what was life like on the Emmons um, in terms of how you got along with your other shipmates? I had no problems. I know, I've never had problems with people at all. Uh, I, if, th if problems start, start to come up, I just walk away. It's, it, to me, I was taught it's foolish to uh, fight about something that amounts to nothing. And I never have because my dad taught us that. And, but the men on the, the Ellens, they're my brothers, always have been, always will be. What would you say um, to some one of the members of the younger generation about why it was important to do what you did in World War II? To me it was important because I was taught that this country was the greatest country in the world and, and uh, it was my grandfather, my dad, and all the people, my family, always said it was honor comes before almost anything when country is concerned. It's, a, it's an honor thing with a, within our family. My family from, from, from the Revolutionary War fought for this country. My Family back in Pennsylvania, they were, uh, came over in 1750, I think it was, and they fought the revolution and they came down to North Carolina and then to Georgia and they fought in the Civil War, but on the Confederate side. And my mother's people fought on the Confederate side. So my grandfather on my mother's side fought with the 1st Alabama Company K. And he was taken prisoner at uh, Shiloh, Tennessee, and taken to uh, Louisville, Kentucky, and then on up to Wisconsin. And this, is a, this is not even relating to this. What am I talking about? <laughs> but I think the point you were making is that, you know, it's part of your family's tradition. It is. Um, to the, the idea of, of serving your country, in, whether it's in war or, you know, whether it's war here or war um, overseas, but it's an honor. And, and it's an honor thing, but it was in the family, yeah. Yes. Um, you've been coming to reunions on and off over the years. What what does it mean to you to come? It, it, it means I got to get to see the group of men I say are my brothers and I love them. That's what it means to me. That I tell my children the greatest people I ever knew in my life. Greatest men I ever knew in my life. And they still are. 
So those are all the questions I have. Anything else you want to tell the world? <laughs> no. <laughs> I've said more than enough now. That was great. Thank you very much.